Again. Well, indeed, it was a great few changes as well on the Limerick side eventually. The likes of uh, Frankie Carroll particularly contributing well in the second half. Yes, Tony, well, Tip made a change as well, Tony, but the changes worked today. Some days they worked, more days they don't, but today they worked a dream and they were the line for the draw. I think Hurling was the winner today, Tom. Oh, Hurling was the winner, Tony. Hurling didn't win all year, actually. That'd be another day. It's great to be, great having another pack of Tip. Thanks for talking to us and well done. Thanks, Anil. But back to you for the moment, Joe. Yes, indeed, Tony. It was terrific in the second half. We have to admire so much of Tip's play in the first half. They were masterful all over the park. Wonderful scores. They gave an exhibition, really. But Limerick played with pride, didn't they? Yes, I mean, great credit due to Limerick. I mean, they came back in the second half. Everybody thought they were dead and buried. And we've seen that against Clare in the last game. There weren't, the game is over 70 minutes, and it's there to be won over the 70 minutes. And Limerick showed tremendous courage to come back. Gary Kirby, I think it was 10 points he scored in all, just two below the tally of last year. And there's Frankie, Frankie Carroll. The Carroll family have given great service to Limerick Hurling down the years. And Tony, you've got somebody else for us. Well, with me is Ken Hogan. Ken, at halftime you spoke to us, you said Tib had to make sure to maintain their concentration. What happened? I think uh, it was a very tough second half. I mean, they had the elements with them, they had the breeze. They were playing down the hill, as I told you, at halftime. I thought we fought hard, we showed great character, I mean they had caught up, it was a quarter of an hour to go and we made a few switches and it seemed to work and we held out to the end. But both teams showed great character and they made a great monster final and I'm sure the replay will be just as good. But at least we're there, we're not looking back with regrets. There was one point in the second half when you added a couple of scores, did you think you had weathered the storm at that stage? We had one great chance of a goal and we put it wide, we blazed it wide, even a pint would have done at that stage. But uh, overall I think Limerick had a few great chances as well to hit the post. So, thankfully, we're still there. So, another day out. Well, you know how important the mental aspect is. Is the psychological advantage with Limerick now? I don't think so. Obviously, Limerick, after playing, they have a marathon struggle, really, in Munster now. They're playing, they've played so many matches. But realistically, we hadn't got a tough game, and that was our first tough game of the year. So, hopefully, we'll be on fire next Sunday. They've put a silly hat on your head, Ken. I better let you go. Thanks very much for joining us. It's curious, before the match I was chatting with Liz Hard, who was PRO of the Tipperary County Board, I asked her when would the replay be, she said next Sunday in Thurles. Well, that would clash with the Leinster Hurling Final, but it was the following weekend it would clash with the Munster Football Final. But well, we've enjoyed ourselves this afternoon, hope you have as well, from the Gaelic Grounds. Cheerio. Yes, Joe Canning there at the Gaelic Grounds with Tomás Mulcahy assisting in commentary. I have to say that is one of the most extraordinary 35 minutes of hurling that I have seen for quite some time. I'm sure that Cyril Farley would agree. I'll ask him in just a moment for his thoughts. Let me give you two other scores of two matches going on at the moment. Uh, this is in football in Ulster. Down are leading Cavan, 112 to 12 points. That game is still on. And in Leinster, Mead are leading Leash by 112 to 1-6. The scoreline there. Cyril, back to the hurling. I defy you to analyse that second half. Well, Michael, I've said it before, if you want to go to a field game, if you want value for money, you go to a hurling game. Where are you going to get 45,000 people packed, not a, not a stroke of rancour, crowds mixing together, and like, like uh, Tomás Ryan there was saying, then, his heart was pumping. Sure, our heart was pumping here in the studio. It was a great advert for hurling. Again at half-time, Limerick looked dead and buried, 10 points down, to drew caution to the win, Brahan, Mike Gallagher, Brahan, Frankie Carroll, Brahan, Young Tobin. Went for scores, maybe a bit reckless early on the first half from way out the field, got a few inspiration scores, Tip seemed to be doing the right thing, getting a few, bring on a few experienced fellas, and yet at the end of the game, like here in the studio, we were hoping a draw match in the sense sure. that both teams deserve another day, and it, like, it can only do good for hurling. It's, it's, it's been a fantastic, you know, the Munster campaign this year has been something else. Absolutely, it's been brilliant hurling and it's been a pleasure to be able to bring it to you live here on RT television. I think uh, the last couple of weeks have proved the value, haven't they, of live matches in the afternoon. We'll talk in greater detail about that second half after this commercial break. Hello, you're welcome back again. An update on the football situation. Down or through to the Ulster final against Tyrone. They've beaten Cavan 113 to 13 points. Uh, still on in Leinster between Mead and Leash, but I think Mead looking good there. 214 to 16 is the latest score on that one. Back to the hurling again. Uh, David McGrath from County Cork rang in to say it was a smashing game of clean sporting hurling played in the best of spirit, and I hope there's plenty more to come for the rest of the season. Emer McCarthy from West Cork, age 12, thought it was an excellent match. The best comeback in years. You're right there, Emer. And John Hassett from County Clare said that Limerick caught Clare on a bad day in the semi-final and their weaknesses have been exploited by Tipperary today. 
Well, I suppose he's going in the first half, really. Everyone's kind of saying that, that Limerick are relying too much on Gary Kirby. Again, he got a lot of scores today. Like, they're kind of one forward, you know, dimension up front rather than six. Tip fours in the first half had that six, everyone blending in. But in the second half, like, Limerick needed fellas to take the game by the scruff of the neck, to bring on Mike Gallagher and Frankie Carroll early on, and they had to, take, you know, to get someone to do it. And, uh, like, in the second half, again, they proved they came back from 10 points down. They wind up with, with 19 points, no goals on the score sheet. So, like, they can't be too bad of a team. Sure. OK, can I just clear up one thing? A lot of phone callers rang in to ask me what I meant when I said that John Lahey wasn't a light player. Now, what I simply meant was he had a reputation for being a niggly player on the field, but he has cleared that out, up out of his game. That's all I've meant against John. There was no other insult intended, I can assure you. Let's look at the second half, Cyril. Um, TJ Ryan, you mentioned, they needed somebody to take this game with the scruff of the neck, and he almost had a goal for them early on. Yeah, for, for Limerick to come back, I believe that they kind of needed a goal to set them alight. Now, they needed someone to take the game with the scruff of the neck. Now, Tip started off well here, but for once, to t here now, we've got a break this time. Down long ball from, from Hoolan down along the field. This ball is going to break inside. It just hops here between the full back of the road, and Ryan gets a, a flick to it. Good, you know, a good touch, hits the post, goes wide. Now, if that went in, you'd say it would ignite Limerick. Mm -hmm. You know, but there it was again, you know, you say, like, yeah. well, Tipper on top, uh, you know, it's up a good few points at this stage, and wh what's going to happen to change it? Yeah. But, like, they came, you know, within very, but they didn't get that, that score there, but Ryan went on after us to get very good points, yeah. and, and, uh, uh, all the other, Galligan and Frankie Carroll that came on, they, they took the game by the scruff of the neck. There was one vital, uh, you know, save as well, um, Yep. In, in, in this second half. There was as well, sir, but one thing about it was when that goal chance was missed, we kind of thought, as you said, oh, well, that's, here we go, like, it's just not Limerick's day. And yet TJ Ryan in particular was a player who kept plugging away and got some great scores. Yeah, he got some great points. When, when the ball seems to be going away from here now, like he's under pressure from, for, again from the tip back. Again, now, here for a change, the Limerick backs are, are forcing the ball upfield. A uh, good hand pass here by Hulen again. Straight ball straight in from Frankie Carroll, kind of a miss hit. Now TJ Ryan is well blocked here by George Flynn. He's hustled in his ass, it breaks away from him, he keeps after it all the time. Eventually he gets it up and fires a great shot over the bar. Just, he's on his, you'd imagine his weak side is such, but left-handed, a great shot over the bar, a good score. Mm -hmm. And these kind of scores, early in the second half, seem to ignite Limerick and they brought them, brought them back into the game. Sure, and the manner in which they won possession there for TJ Ryan's score was indicative of the way the second half was going for them because those fumbly little things, they were winning more of those, they were winning none of them in the first half. First half were winning actually any, any time to fumble the ball, Tip took it off and went off and got scores, but in the second half it was a complete transformation. But to me, Michael, the, the, the next clip we're going to show actually drew the game for Limerick. Sure. Because here's a ball coming in for Tipperary, a great ball by Aidan Ryan, flicked it on the ground, good whip on the ground, Aidan isn't long around the time, and Joe Quaid wins off a fantastic save, we'll see if he can open a minute, and that, if that ball went into the net, Tipperary had the game won. Sure. Well, Joe Quaid, since he's come into the Limerick side in the last uh, two or three years, has proved himself a fantastic goalkeeper to replace the man, of course, who went out before him. This was, as you said, absolutely vital. Yeah. Ramey Ryan ball, back here to, from Brian, to Brian O'Mara, across here again, it's going to break inside, look, good whip on the ground, great save. Like the camera barely caught the shot, but it caught the eight nine is a great shot. If that went in, I believe Tip would have won the sure. match well. But yeah. that's what games are made of. Yeah. Well, the speed, I mean, the speed of the shot is indicative in how quickly it, it, it sort of flashed up on our, our screen. But when we see the replay again, we see the, the instant reaction by Joe Quaid. Yeah, you see the ball breaks here, eight nine, a good flick. Just a good, like he wasn't expecting that ball at all. Sure. And just, uh, he blocked it, look as if didn't go over the bar, went out for 65. If that went in, I think Tip would be in the driving seat. Yeah. And even though, like, they look back on the great scores uh, that, that, f that they all got in the forwards, like, Joe, in his own way, was as much important as anyone is to, to, in the makings of a replay in that game. Tip made changes during the course of that second half that we wondered about. They took off the wing back, they took off Conal Bonner out of midfield when he was playing particularly well. What are your thoughts on that? Well, maybe Brian Carroll was injured, but I thought the backs were doing well enough, and I thought that Conal Bonner midfield was doing very well. And I was saying to you, Michael, that if they're going to be on someone, to probably be Aidan Ryan for one of the wing forwards and play a third midfielder. But instead of that, they put uh, Conor Baller back wing back where he's well to play and brought Aidan Ryan to midfield. Yeah. Now, Aidan Ryan's good hurling. did a lot of good hurling there. Nicky was born to come on up front. And, I, you know, from training, I think Nicky was going very well in training last week. And I'd say he was very disappointed not to be picked. And again, sure. he showed like, that he, he is worth his place in that tip team, mm -hmm. even though very good, you know, even if the one without him, they're going to say, well, we have a great bench. But he showed by coming on, like, and he got scores, made scores, that he definitely worth his place. Yeah. They kind of went on the defensive, and it's a dangerous thing to do against a strong breeze a team playing at home I'd say if they had it to play over again they mightn't go as defensive as much because like when you are leading there is a tendency maybe to go back and defence but like tip forwards are well able to score they woke yeah. up again near the end and got some good scores Well it was a fascinating contest as it turned out what a second half once more we have to emphasise congratulations by the way to Liam Cahill who was our man of the match from that one thanks to Sir Lord so for the moment but now